It might seem odd to leave a window open on a cold night, especially since you worked so hard on your van's insulation. But ventilation is super important. It helps with condensation and it helps with air quality. Don't you worry a little bit that you're going to run out of oxygen in the middle of the night and pass out or something. How long does it take for two people to use up all the air in a van? We're going to find out. My son's here with me and uh, he's going to help me uh, and we're just going to breathe until the air is gone. The air quality meter starts out at just over 400 and that's typical for fresh outside air. Well, let's fast forward to the end and we've reached 1500 after only 14 minutes. The meter is not only indicating port but it's also flashing a warning sign that we need new air. So let's take a look at the cool ways other people have designed their ventilation systems and then I'll show you what I'm thinking which I haven't actually seen anyone else do. A cheap solution is to just crack your windows a bit and install a rain guard. It has a lot of drawbacks but it's better than nothing. I followed this guy's example and made these large vents out of gutter covers, screen and tape. They kept mosquitoes out but I still didn't get enough airflow. Also with these in I couldn't use the reflective window covers I'd made. So that meant I wasn't stealthy and also that the sunlight would wake me up too early in the morning. Adding a fan like this would help a lot with the airflow, but not with the stealth. This guy made a slim custom snorkel system that pulls in air without letting any light in or out. Rooftop fans are common and work well, but they aren't stealthy and they also involve cutting a hole in the top of your van which is pretty destructive if you ever want to sell it. A floor vent like this one is also destructive, but it is stealthy. One last fun idea is to take advantage of your sunroof if you have one. And now it's my turn. The idea is pretty obvious, but it was tricky to get working. I just want to use the van's ventilation system with it turned on fresh air instead of recycle. The challenge is getting it to run without running all the car's electrical systems um, and I also don't want to risk uh, killing the battery so I'll wake up with a dead battery in the morning. Fresh air enters the vehicle under the hood right along here. There's already protection from bugs and water. I don't actually know where it exits the vehicle. Actually let's find out. Here I've got a Halloween smoke generator. The smoke machine has a remote control. Hook it up to some uh, power in here and then I'm gonna I'm gonna seal up the van, generate a bunch of smoke with the fan on and we'll see where it exits the car. Okay, let's start the smoke. Hey, I see it, I see it, I see it. I don't know where it's coming from, but it comes out the back. My front blower is right behind the glove box, and you can access the cable up under here without actually even taking anything apart. Here's the view from underneath. Older cars have just two wires, and the fan speed knob adjusts the voltage sent to the blower. But my car has three wires. I tried touching 12 volts to all the wires, but it didn't work. It actually wasn't easy to find the technical specs, but eventually I found this image. The important clue here is that the blower is expecting a series of ground pulses on the middle wire. So I have here an automotive oscilloscope to get a look at those pulses. I poked a safety pin into the skinny center wire and then clipped on the oscilloscope probe. All right, let's look at the signal while the fan is on low. In the screenshot you can see it takes 2 milliseconds for the pulse to cycle up and down. So that equates to 500 hertz. But it turns out the frequency doesn't really matter. What matters is the fraction of, of each cycle that the signal spends in the low state down on the bottom. I'll turn the fan up full blast so you can see. Now most of the time is spent on the bottom. The cool thing is the peak to peak voltage is 5 volts, which is very common. It means the signal is going to be easy to replicate. So the first part we need is a square wave signal generator. I got this one on Amazon for only $13. And really this is the only part you need for this project. 
For input, it can be powered by anywhere from 3 to 30 volts, and it outputs a 5 volt pulse just like we need. I don't want to drain my car battery, and I have a ton of Ryobi batteries in my shop. So I bought this adapter. It connects to my 18 volt battery, and then it has this step down converter, so the final output is 12 volts, just like my blower expects. And if I need more power, I also bought this adapter, which is for the big 40 volt batteries, and it also has a step down converter to output 12 volts. These connectors are nice, so I won't have to solder any wires. Finally, I don't want to cut any wires on my car, so I looked all over and I found this wiring harness on eBay for my specific blower motor. I'll just disconnect the existing harness and plug this one in each time I use this stuff. Let's put it all together. First, we'll connect all four negative wires. There's the battery negative, the signal generator V-negative terminal, the ground for the output from the pulse width modulator, and the blower motor negative. Now, my wiring harness uses black for positive and yellow for negative, which is goofy. I guess they're copying the Toyota harness, which has black for positive and ground is white with a black stripe. None of it makes sense, so just use the voltmeter to make sure you get it right. Next, we'll connect the three positive wires to get power from the battery to the signal generator V positive terminal and also the blower motor positive. And finally, we'll connect the pulse output to the middle wire of the blower harness. Set the frequency to 500 hertz, use the duty cycle buttons to adjust the fan speed. Unfortunately, the numbers won't work in reverse since duty cycle sets the width of the top of the pulse instead of the bottom like our blower wants. So high duty cycle means slower fan. The big question is how long will the battery last? So I'm going to test it with my smallest battery which is 2 amp hours. And I want to check on it frequently throughout the night uh, to see if it's still running. So I got this anemometer and that is uh, taking wind speed measurements and transmitting it to the tablet which will record the data all night long. And this big battery just powers those two to make sure they don't shut off. Now right before this I measured the wind speed coming out when the car is on and set to the lowest, uh, the lowest blower speed, the lowest fan speed, and it's 1.4 meters per second. So that's also what I have, as you can see on the tablet, that's also what I have the pulse width modulator set to. Uh, I got 1.4 meters per second by setting it to at 65% uh, if you can read that. So let's, let's start uh, and I'll check, uh, check the data in the morning. And the fan stayed on only one hour and ten minutes before shutting off abruptly. That's a little disappointing, so let's try a bigger battery. We'll try one rated for almost six times as many watt hours as the little one. And here goes test number two with the 40 volt 6 amp hour battery. Okay, this time the fan ran for seven hours and 15 minutes. That's pretty good, and of course I could get more time by setting the fan to an even slower speed. Out of curiosity, I measured the current draw at this test speed and got 2.6 amps. It 
the lowest possible setting, it was 0.3 amps. And at the highest setting, with the blower roaring, it drew 16 amps. That's a lot of amps. I guess because it's a big motor and it needs to pull the air through the cabin filter. Uh, for comparison, I found someone on Reddit measured the current draw of their max fan. Wow, so the rooftop fan uses way less power. I guess that's why they're so popular. But for me, where I have extra batteries, my trips are short, my solution is perfect, and the main thing is that I'm going to sell my van one day so I can't be cutting a hole in the roof. Anyway, thanks for watching. In my next video, I'm going to weld a 10-foot-long spring-loaded sledgehammer. See you then.